Uh, hi. Hi. I was sent an invitation to attend a gift exchange. Am I in the right place? You are. I'm glad you're here, Tony. Oh, you know my name. And you are? I'm Jesus. Jesus? Jesus. Jesus. The real Jesus. Not Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> oh, great. This is so not good. I see you have a gift. Um, yes. The invitation said to bring the very worst gift you have, and you would receive an incredible, amazing gift in return. So, I thought, who wouldn't want to do that? But I didn't know I'd be exchanging gifts with God. <laughs> I might not have brought such a terrible gift. Hmm. Do you mind if I open it? I'm warning you, it's a terrible gift. Hmm. Let's see, we have some broken pottery. I told you. Hmm. A dirty old t shirt. Terrible. A broken dead flashlight. Yeah, the flashlight was dropped in the mud and stepped on a few times. It is really dead. <laughs> well, <clears throat> yeah, that's a pretty bad gift. <laughs> Thank you. It's exactly what I wanted. Right. You want to open my gift? I guess, but I don't deserve an incredible, amazing gift from you after what I just gave you, which is basically worthless. Very true. And spoken with wisdom you didn't even know you had. Here, open it. Okay. Oh, wow. A cross. That is beautiful. And a Bible. I have never had one of my own. And a candle. Oh, that smells really good. Thank you. Hmm. Tony, I know you know the story and, and of the cross, and I know that you never really believed the story and how I died for you on that cross. It's true. I did. It is here that it's here that that cross when I died for you on that cross. That's here is where I get to you get to spend forever in heaven with me. I wanted you to know that, not forget. The Bible, well, that's your instruction book for life while you're here on earth. It has everything you need to know filled with inspiration and guidance. That candle, well, it represents light and fragrance. That's what I am. And that's what I want you to be also. What is this? Hmm. That's a sweat drop of my blood. Do you remember the night, the story of the night in the garden when it is here that I actually won the battle of the cross? 
Tony, I was scared. I was real scared. I was so scared, in fact, that I asked God to, to just, if it's His will, that I don't have to go through with it. The anguish that I felt, oh, it was so intense. I actually sweat drops of blood. Oh, but God said, I have to fulfill the cross. I had to die so that you don't have to. You know what? I would do it again just for you. But thank God, whew, I don't have to because that job is finished. Wow. I'm so undeserving, Jesus. But that was kind of funny, though, how you just thanked God and, well, you're God. Mm. Yeah, I'm pretty hilarious once you get to know me. Really? Yeah, you know that freckle that comes out every year on the tip of your nose? It kind of looks like the eastern star guiding the wise men. <laughs> Right on the tip of your nose. Mm -hmm. That is not funny. I hate that freckle. No, really. It's funny. <laughs> not the freckle, but how you get mad and you stomp around for like a week saying, ha, huh, yep, it happened again. Yeah, Gideon and I, we get together every year. We laugh so hard that we can't breathe. I am so happy to be your source of entertainment. Well, I guess it is kind of funny. You are, Tony, you are the only one that hates that freckle. Everybody else loves that freckle. They don't laugh at you. They smile at you. There's not one single person that doesn't love to see that freckle. It brings a moment of joy and a smile on their face. I didn't know that I brought joy to anyone, ever. You do. You know, do you remember that night in the park when I spared your life? when that fight broke out and two people died by gunshot. The next Monday when you went to work, you said, thank God you spared me. Do you remember your coworker, John? You know, the one that was transferred? Yeah. He had overheard you. And because he had been watching you and your work ethic and how you don't get involved with work gossip, he thought that you were a Christian. Yeah. And he went to church the following Sunday and he gave his life to me because of you. You used me to bring someone to you? Yeah. I'm cool like that. I can, I can do whatever I want. But I don't even live for you. Yeah, and that's not cool. It's not okay, but I did it because I can because I knew that one day we'd be sitting here and I'd be telling you a story that would blow your mind. I don't even know what to say. Tell me you'll keep my gift, Tony. Tell me that you'll honor the sacrifice of the cross and that you'll hide God's word deep in your heart. That you'll be a light to a dark world. And Tony, when hardship comes, know that victory is already here. Tell me you'll keep it, Tony. How can I not keep it? Thank you, Jesus. I gave you the worst of me, and you gave me the best of you. Well, I'm glad you said that because I've got a bonus gift. Another gift? Yeah. I'm, I do that because I, I'm just cool like that, yeah? This looks exactly like the gift I gave you. Cool, huh? Jesus! This is exactly the gift I gave you, except it's all perfect. 
Tony. You're no longer broken. You're whole. You're no longer stained. You're clean. And you're no longer dead. Tony, you're alive. Merry Christmas, Tony. If you got your Bibles, turn to Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20 is where I'd like to read from. It'll be on our screen, so if you don't have your Bible, it's okay. You can just follow along with us. Luke 8, Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. Please stand with me as we honor the reading of God's Word. said, in the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flocks. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today a Savior, who is Messiah the Lord, was born for you in the city of David. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in cloth and lying in a feeding trough. And suddenly there were a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to people he favors. When the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what what has happened, which the Lord had made known to us. And they hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph, and the baby were lying in the feeding trough. And after seeing them, they reported the message they were told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary was measuring up all these things in her heart and meditating on them. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard, just as they had been told. Let's pray. Father, we just pray now for your blessing of the teaching of your word, God. Help us walking out of here today, meditating on some truths. God, that should lead us to action in our own heart. And God, we thank you so much so far for what you've blessed us with today in the this, in this service and the skit, God, and the exchange. God, it was an unfair deal. You took my sin and you gave me eternal life. God, that is an unfair deal. God, help us never to get it over the gift that you've exchanged to us. Lord, we love you and we thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. Y'all believe in Christmas miracles, right? I haven't been able to preach in three weeks. And we said we were getting out of here at 5 o'clock for all of you today as well, you know? So let's get rolling. Verse 8. It said, in the same region, shepherds were staying off in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. And then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today a Savior, who is the Messiah of the Lord, was born for you in the city of David. And this will be a sign for you, You'll be fi- you will find a baby wrapped snugly in cloth, and lying and feeding in a feeding trough. There's three things that I want you to consider today as you wrap up your Christmas day. My prayer is that at some point before you go to bed at night that you can look back over the day and truly have taken a moment, just you and the Lord, to meditate and meet with Him. And if you've already done that, praise God. Uh, If you're like some of our families, man, we've been running since we woke up and, and having a good time together. But my prayer is that today before today ends, that you'll just have a moment with you in Christ, uh, like the Tony character here had, and you will just have a conversation with him. And here's three things I want to encourage you to consider today. Uh, The first is found in verses 8 through 12. The first thing that I want you to consider, I want you to consider those who still haven't heard the message of Christ. Folks, we're talking about 
the most strategic moment in history when God came forth as a baby in the flesh. For 400 years, the prophets of God had been silenced. There was no more truth or word coming out. God has not raised up a prophet over the last time since Malachi was there speaking. And the prophets declared and talked about the day that the Messiah would come and rescue his people and bring them back to him. And for 400 years, that had been kept silent until the moment a baby cries out. A baby in a little town of Bethlehem cries out. And God began physically showing the restoration process he was going to take to redeem his people back to him. But there were people that were clueless of that night. There were people there that had no idea that this night was any different than any other night. They were clueless. And if it had not been from the favor and the initiative of God, these shepherds would remain clueless about the special night that it was. God chooses and shows up and says, I have an announcement to make. I have news to give you. Good news. These guys were not looking for it. Nothing says their attitude that they were longing for it and were reading the prophets and, and longing for the day of this to come. We have nothing other than they're going about their regular business of doing life as a shepherd. Yet God shows up and declares a message. Millions and millions of people 2,000 years later are still clueless about this day. And one thing I challenge you before Christmas Day ends today is I want you to consider those that still have not heard the good news of Jesus Christ. And I want to challenge you as a brother in Christ to beg for God to do what only God can do. Lord, may all the people praise you. May all the people praise you. May your favor shine upon them so that they may know your salvation according to Psalm 67. And tonight before you go to bed and tonight before you begin a beginning of a new year, would you ask God to put a burning passion in your heart to be a beggar of souls and ask for God to show up and announce to other people all across this world that there is still good news for them to hear. Amen? People still do not know of this night. And these shepherds would not have stumbled upon it on their own. God had to show up and let them know this is an incredible night. Will we be a people this year that beg for God to announce his glory to others who don't know it? Will we be a people of God who say, Lord, will you do what only you can do and let others know that you exist and that your presence is real and that you are the truth they're looking for? Will we be beggars of God this year? Second thing to consider about those who've never heard is next week you will have a great opportunity to give an offering that will enable and support missionaries around this world to be in some places, as you saw in a video last week, places that is illegal to share the gospel. It will allow them to stay where they are and to continue to proclaim the glory of God. So not only can you pray, guys, you can give. You can begin praying tonight, Lord, what is it that you would have me do? to be a proclaimer of your truth to others. And friend, the last you can do is you can go. You don't just have to pray for it. You don't just have to give to it. But every one of you in this room, if you will ask God to reveal it to you, <coughs> God is sovereignly lining you up with people who don't know his truth. I've had a good time. I've had two of our nieces, our two nieces come in for Christmas, and uh, this, there's this new character on Walt Disney called Elena of Avalar. I don't know if anybody heard of him. We got any fans out there? 
heart you're a fan, Elena? No, you just know it all, right? Gotcha. Gotcha. It's good to know, man. It's good to know. There's this new Walt Disney character called Elena of Avalar, okay? And, like, she's just, she's tearing up the pocketbooks of mamas and daddies all across the land, okay? Uh, they're just loving it. And so I'm trying to joke with my little niece last night, Lucy, and say, well, let me just try to think of some of her songs. And so you may not know this about me, but I am very professional when it comes to knowing the songs of Walt Disney, you know? Um, got in the movies. Not ashamed of it, Okay. And so I'm teasing her uh, just using all these other songs. And so the first one I start out with is one of my favorites, you know, uh, Little Mermaid, you know, Ariel. And so I just start singing that song. And she looks at me and she's like, that's not the song. That's not Elena of Avalar. I mean, so we just played this game. But it made me think about this message today. And it made me think about the Little Mermaid for a moment. See, you didn't have a clue you are going to hear about Little Mermaid today in Christmas service, Okay. But in that movie, what's so funny about that is that they have an idea down the ocean of what different things are used for, and they're exactly wrong when it comes to that. And so this little mermaid, when she comes onto the land and starts walking around, she thinks while she's in an ocean that there's this little fork, and it's a comb, actually. And so she, in the ocean, she would comb her hair with a fork. And so when she's sitting at the dinner table trying to impress this prince, that she wants to fall in love with, and she sees that fork, she immediately grabs it and starts combing her hair. And everybody looks at her weird, okay? And we think it's funny because we know it's a fork, and we know what the fork is supposed to be used for, not for something that you put on your hair, but something you put in your mouth, right? Well, friends, let me wake you up to South Georgia. There are people in this community that when you talk about the gospel message of Jesus Christ, they may look at you and shake their head and say, yeah, I know this, but they've never heard the gospel according to the Bible. Never. They might have grown up with a mom and a daddy who heard the gospel. They might have gone to a church where the gospel is what built the bricks and the foundation of that building, but they themselves have never heard the pure gospel of Jesus Christ and what he's come to do. So friends, don't think it's just going overseas to share the gospel. Will you, before today ends, ask God to put on your heart one person who doesn't know, who's never truly heard the gospel? To them, it's nothing different than taking a fork and combing it with your hair. They don't know his purpose and they don't know the place that he can serve in their life. Will you consider this before the day ends? Let's keep going. Suddenly there were a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people he favors. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to people he favors. Second thing I want you to consider today. I want you to consider the first Christmas carol that was ever sung on this holy night. This was the first Christmas carol, the first song sang out by the heaven's choir. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to people he favors. Would you take a moment to just consider what the first Christmas carol's truths what it was saying about you and what it's saying about God. When we hear this first Christmas song, what does it say about God? (laughs) Glory to God. In our terms, God, you're awesome. God, you're incredible. God, your plans are greater than our plans. Your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. You blow my mind, God. There's no one like you, God. Because here's the one true God that created all things to worship him. All things are commanded to testify to his greatness. And the one thing that you made special, you had a kick out of the garden because they said, we wanted to be God ourselves. And so they took of the, of the, of the fruit and they sinned. And they were cast out of Eden. 
And God, you had every right at that moment as the world turns and turns and gets wicked and more wicked, you had every right to judge us and cast us all into eternal damnation. But you cry out through a baby, mercy. You cry out through the cry of a baby, hope. And not only do you decide to clean up this dirty business, you don't delegate that out. You come down and do it yourself. You come after us. Props to you, God. There is no one like you. Before the day's over, will you let Jesus know that? Will you join with the angels in saying, you're awesome. There is no God like you. And will you let it go to the second verse, peace on earth to people he favors? Instead of judgment, instead of vengeance, he chooses salvation for you, church. He says, I want no more war with you. You're not going to be my enemy any longer. I am going to change your heart and you're going to be my son and my daughter. You will have peace with me. God, you're awesome. Look what you have done for me. Verse 15, when the angels had left them, it returned to heaven. The shepherds said to one another, let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the feeding trough. And after seeing them, they reported the message they were told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart and meditating on them. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard, just as they had been told. Last thing I want to challenge you with to consider on this Christmas day is consider your response. Based off this scripture, <clears throat> we get to see the response of the shepherds. And their response was twofold. <clears throat> and their twofold response can be separated into two types of people here today. Their first response was is that they had to believe that this message was true. They had to come to a realization that they were not all just losing their mind, but these angels were real, and this message about this child was real, and they had to come to a conclusion to trust that truth. And so that speaks to maybe the person in this room here today. You've heard that Jesus is real. You have heard the truth about why this is a Merry Christmas because God has given us Christ, his son, grace for our punishment. He has turned around to save us. He gives us his son, born of a virgin, so that he could be the perfect spotless lamb that will take on the sins of you and me and die from the wrath of God. Be buried in a grave but come out three days later to give you and I a new hope and a new life through him. This is the truth of the message of Christmas. This is where it leads us. Now, will you do more than just hear it today? Will you trust and pursue this Christ? Will you, like the shepherds, not stay in the field but will you go pursue Christ wherever he is? Because you know that that's the most important thing you could be spending your time on. Will you consider trusting in him today? Before Christmas ends, will you allow yourself to unwrap the gift of salvation that God has made perfectly for you? Their second fold response was in their worship. 
after they go and after they see the Christ child, they go away glorifying and praising God to all they see for what he has done. That message is to the church today. Church, before today's over, will you consider your response to the message of Christmas? Have you allowed it to overtake your heart to where it's leading you into a state of worship? Because that is the most appropriate gift we can give back in return to God. The overwhelming gratitude of what he has given to us. And nothing less than our life. Nothing Nothing else can be asked for than our life given back to him. Will you worship him today based on what he has given to you? I want to say Merry Christmas to you. And today we're going to continue in worship as we close out with communion and one last song singing about the mercy of God that he showed us. So if you've never had communion with us, I want to give you instructions on how we do this. We allow those of you who profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, regardless if you're a member of Bridge or not, you're welcome to participate in Holy Communion. We would love for it to be a personal thing for you. What we mean by that is that we're not going to bring the cup and the bread down the aisle to you. We're going to let you come to the table and take the bread and take the cup. And then you have one of three choices. Actually, we're going to give you two choices today. You can either come to the altar, kneel and pray, and then eat the bread and drink the cup, or you're welcome to take the cup and the bread back to your chair, take a moment to pray, listen to the songs that we'll be playing in the background, and worship the Lord. Whichever would be best for you to just have your expression of personal worship unto Jesus, we want to give you that opportunity. We encourage families to come together, those who profess Christ as Lord and Savior, to partake from the table, and the spiritual leader of that home, either at the altar or wherever, at the chair, lead your family in that time of communion. There's open space over here at the cafe if you wanted to circle up and do it there. But we want to give you an opportunity to express your gratitude back to Christ. Because as you take that bread, it represents his body that was broken for you. That perfect, beautiful baby grew up to be a perfect, bold, and brave man. And he took the cross for you. Worship him for that. And the cup that you take represents his blood poured out to purify you from your unrighteousness and to be covered in his righteousness. Worship him for that. I'm going to start us in a time of prayer and then I'm going to begin with my family. We're going to remove the table, the cloth from the tables. So Serge, if you'll get this side and Jared, if you'll help with this side. We'll start with the front rows. Don't feel you have to get up all at the same time. But we'll start from the front and work our way to the back. We ask you to come down the middle aisle and then make your way to the outside to a seat. Let's worship the Lord and let's consider our response, our appropriate response back to him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you, Lord, that you came to save us. We want to just love you back now, Lord, by remembering your sacrifice. And Lord, we thank you for it. Amen.